and humble. Extremely humble. But I'll do my best not to be emotional. <laughs> Madam Chairperson, my sister, and the Vice Chancellor of this great university, of this great university, Professor Richard. The Registrar of the University, our distinguished and accomplished members of faculty, our revered traditional and religious leaders, management and staff of this university. Student leadership, fellow students, and at the appropriate time, I will explain why I say fellow students. My colleagues from the media, because I'm a member of the Ghana Journalist Association. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me first of all thank the leadership of the university for the honor done the police service with this invitation to be here today to deliver this public lecture. And I also would like to thank the Faculty of Social Sciences and the Public Lectures, Lectures Committee for going the extra mile to put this lecture together and make it a reality. And in this vein, I also would like to thank Dr. Jones Okokowari for being the coordinator between the police and the university and putting in all the mechanisms to ensure that we have today and to come and give this lecture. I also would like to thank all of you here present today for finding time to be with us, for us to have this engagement. And particularly, I would like to thank my fellow students. And I hear I will explain my fellow students to be the fact that I have decided not to ever stop being a student. And I will keep learning the difference is that I don't have the opportunity of getting up every morning to come to lectures. Neither will I have the opportunity of having new school or classmates, or will there be an examination ahead of me leading to an award of a certificate. But while I have chosen to continue to be a student at life, maybe you can consider me as a student at large. And with that in mind, in the hope which is interested in me can have me as an adopted student of the world. <laughs> Having said this, we came with the blessing of the whole police administration and the entire police force, the police service. That is why you see most of my colleagues here, both from the headquarters and also from the region. Accompany me here and will have to go to 
have the fullness of the police leadership to be here. But for what reason or the other, and one assignment and the other, they were only able to come and have this session representing them. And they have asked me to convey our congratulations to you, the leadership, and the entire university body on the celebration of your 70th anniversary. We are aware that this celebration started somewhere last year, and you are still in the celebration mood. And we wish you well, and we know that the next 70 years will be better than the one that just passed. But the important point that we want to make is the fact that your 70 years has been fabulous, has been impactful. And if you really want to measure it, then I want to probably sum it up in this way. The impact of the university can be felt within every corner of this country and across the globe. And it is on this note that we want to appreciate all those who were the three graces that brought it to the point that you picked it up and you are continuing. And some of them have been called to glory. May their soul rest in place in peace. The rest who are not here today are all over the world, within the country and across the globe, continuing to preach the things that you taught them, for which you have become always the best in Ghana and the very best also across the African continent. <laughs> now, with all these interesting remarks, let me now turn my attention to why we are here today. And the simple aspect of it is for us to come and have a discussion about the changing face of policing in the country. And as Madam Chairperson said, expectations and the role of the university community. This engagement is relevant because, as we know, policing is and will always be about the people. Policing will always be about the people. We cannot take that away for even a second. And the beauty of this is this. With this engagement, we are going to work together to continue to sustain the peace of this country in such a way that all of us, individually and collectively, will be able to live our God-given destiny. And if we succeed in this venture of maintaining the peace and tranquility, the stability, or the limits of this country, that will be the greatest tribute and honor to our forebearers who kept the peace for us to come and inherit and enjoy. In the same way, it will also be the greatest inheritance that we can leave for our children and their children. With this in mind, when my colleagues and I took the realm of office to be to the next level, we decided to put in place pragmatic strategic policy interventions to build on the good work done by our predecessors so as to be able to get to the point that the peace and plenty of the country will be sustained for the good of ourselves in terms of the rest of our life and also for the good of our children. So with this, we therefore decided to embark on a journey of rigorous, pragmatic transformation, building on the work of our forebearers, our former bosses, so that we will become the best institution in this country and a reference point for the rest of the world. And when we say this, we don't say it lightly. 
It may not happen during our time, but we are very sure and convinced that we will create the environment and position the organization in such a way that nobody can reverse that cost of becoming the best institution in the country and a reference point in the world. And how and how and how we are going about it in the story that I'm here today to share with you. So what is the story? The first component of the story is that when we decided to do something pragmatic, something transformational about policing in the country, we decided that we want to take another critical look at our historical problem and we walk into that. After that walk, we decided to sit back and have an assessment of where we have been in terms of our performance from our point of view and also from the point of view of you, our masters, whom we said. So that we will then be in a position to compare those and see what strategic options are available to us for us to take. And with that mindset, we will then, depending on what strategic option we want to take, re-examine your expectations and then use that expectation to inform our strategic direction and go out there and deliver what is to deliver on our strategic policy intervention. And while we do that, then we'll be in a position to ask you to come on board with your responsibility of supporting us because policing is and always be a shared school. So, the first group of the story. Where we are from, our journey. Our journey can be looked at from three main angles. Pre-colonial period, which I call the green period, and the colonial period, which I call the dark ages of our history, and the independent period, which are called Golden Age period. And as you all know, before colonialism, it was all about Nananum in the enclave that would create as a kingdom, having some people doing the work of policy to see to the interests of that small group. And we walk into the environment. Then we walk into the environment where we have the colonial period, where the masters, the colonial masters decided to use the police for their own interests and not for the interests of the people. In fact, it was all about protecting their interests and they care less about the interests of the people. And the third component, the golden age, which we are so struggling to get it right, is to create the police service of the people, by the people, and for the people. And we are on it. So if you want to have pictures of how we have come, how far we have come, let's share a couple of them. And don't laugh at us. The typical environment you will see with where we came from, barefooted in those days. And in modern times, the young ones will be telling us with a song on Amdadi, on Shem So that is how we started off. And from there, we've journeyed on. We got to a point that we succeeded in at least 
having some progresses and, and also because maybe prayer was not sufficient for the process, we will end up having a long stop to cater for the efficiency of the progress. In order to move on. So, actually, you can see that we come from very far and we are sort of journeying on. So, where are we? Well, fortunately, we then now have the full complement of a driver and then some belt and stuff to go. And we are coming to this era where now the full complement of modernization is with that. And then we are finding ourselves as an integral part of it. Then you see the police of the people, for the people and by the people in action, creating a new phase for all of us. Then when we have to show force in order to protect your life and property, the full complement of it is also done. Then you also have where we go and try to keep on modernizing for the purpose of ensuring that we keep you safe and keep protect your properties at all levels. Then we see all this. The interesting thing is that as we walk through our history, you will feel the presence of multiple police administrations which have come to make huge contributions and of which we are building on. And we can count up to my time 23 of them. And maybe some of you will have some of your family members who once headed this organization. And if you have not seen their pictures for a long time, I'm doing you the favor. <laughs> so you have Mr. Mandate, the first Ghanaian IGP, all up to the sixth one, Mr. C.O. Lamte, who passed away a couple of months ago and his funeral is slated for 19th of this month. So we are in funeral mode, and as you always see, we are always in black. So even when we are mourning, we don't even see the difference. But we need so recipes. There are also have from Mr. Chen, my father, through up to that administration, to Nana also Then we have Mr. Champon, through to my big brother, Mr. James Opongwenu. And someone will ask, why is that slot empty and your picture is not there? It isn't my responsibility to put my picture there. I have to go on retirement for somebody to carry my picture and put it there. So I look for day that my picture will be there for somebody also to come and continue this job and probably do it better than we are doing it now. Then with this, there has also been serious external interventions with the intention of reforming and modernizing the police service, starting with the Boyer Report, the Ryan Report, Tiburu, Okujato, Aisha Report, all were targeting one aspect of the police service for purposes of ensuring that we become better and serve you better. And when all we said and done, we came to one conclusion. We have unfortunately or fortunately become a product of our history. So we carry some baggage from the pre-colonial era. We carry some from the colonial era. And the independent aspect is also in there. But we've not been able to find out, to dissect it, to find out which portion of each that we are carrying along. But the beauty of it is that we we'll keep improving and taking out the things that we think will not help us. And then making sure that the product that we put it out there for you will be a product that you admire and you're always wanting to ask for more. But with this, let's then, after that, we decided to do a complete assessment of what exactly has been achieved. And from our perspective, we thought that we have achieved a lot 
because we believe we are living our mandate, especially when you compare us to other countries within the South region and beyond, with now ranking us as the second best in Africa, the eighth and order. The beauty of it is this. We also keep expanding. We also keep expanding across the country as far as resource may be permitted. And with all this expansion, anytime we are involved in an international assignment, people don't want us to leave. They want us to be there. And at times, when we see how back home we are treated, at times we feel that, why don't we stay there forever? <laughs> but home is home. And at times she also reminds us of the saying that the prophet is never accepted in his own time. But we are the new space and it is you who have employed us and we will own our services to you. And if you are not satisfied, you need to get on with it. So with all this, we decided also to assess ourselves from your perspective. And this is what we found. We found that in the middle of the we are still underperforming. Okay. And he said that we show zero partnership. We don't work with you. It's like you are minding your business, or we are also minding our business, and we have become so reactive. When something, nothing is happening, everybody is on his own, and therefore you don't feel that we are providing a service to you. Also, there are issues where you see us as a wrong professional and in some cases to consider as an occupying force and an occupying force in the sense that just now but for this purpose if you happen to be here and walk into a lake chapel as soon as I enter you make action I then help us but we were thinking that seeing the police officer should rather bring relief and we'll get there where you see as more of a friend than as an occupying force. So the still assessment from your perspective. The other aspect which is in green is that we are corrupt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A problem identified is how the solution. We've never said that they are not a couple of people who are doing things in a corrupt way, punishing the area of the service. We've never said that. We are doing all what we can to handle it. But we will never accept the fact that we are the most corrupt in which is the case of Congo. Because all those researches have challenged methodologies. And at the appropriate time, we'll keep responding to them. But we also keep working at the things that people over the years have used it against us and make us so, so uncomfortable when it comes to the issue of growth. And when we get it, we will surely know that we are right. And we will get it. That is the So what do we see? We see, and these are not in rich words. But we are interested in the misses, the, the way after the misses. We will have learned to have the trust, the confident respect, and the legitimacy that we need back in. But from all the feelings that we get, you think that we've missed your trust, we've missed your confidence, we've missed your respect, and it has weakened our legitimacy. That is the thing. And we will not run away from them. Because we are doing introspection. For us to be able to get the strategic focus to turn the corner so that we can then separate the misses from the other part of the world and we have those who are standing alone. And for some of you who are now over age and not doing the police, to be very uncomfortable that now the police has become so attractive that you wish you were younger for you to join. So all this, what has happened? There has been a very big 
big expectation that we think that we are almost there. But the people we serve think otherwise. That we are not there yet. So the question that we ask ourselves, should we mind the God? Should we mind the God? And doing that, we came to the realization that we have some certain culture. We can choose to do nothing. It's also those kind of strategy will tell you. It's also an option. Or we can use the propagandist approach. Pretend to be doing something. Or tell we do everything possible. Everything humanly possible. So this was the option spoken to us and colleagues and I in formulating the study intervention to turn around the farm and build on the foundation of our border in our port for my So what informed the choice that we did? About four things. The first thing is that we are employees of yours. That's why we are called public servants. And anytime you see the word servant, you must be looking for the master. And you are the masters. So if your master says they are not happy with you and you are a servant and you want to keep your job, what do you do? You must do something special if you really love your job. So we thought that we have to remember that in making a choice as to doing nothing, pretend to be doing something, or doing anything, everything humanly possible. The next thing that we also saw was that we went around and be looking for a very good musician. May you so rest in peace. If you do good, you do for yourself. And that statement is very loaded. We saw that very soon we'll become civilians one more time. So if we mess up with the quality of policy, it will catch up with us. We also saw that our children, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our aunties, they are not in uniform. They are also experiencing the same quality of policy. So whatever we have to do, and we think that we are really to improve the policy. Set up a bed in hand, better than 20 or 30 in there, 
on a tree somewhere on the streets. But the beauty of it is that we looked at it from what is it that we have to do internally to handle the situation, and what is it that we have to do externally to also handle the situation, and then and serve it better. The first one is having a leadership driven command and control culture. The second one is seen to the personal development, the work of the personnel. And the third one is ensuring police professional standards and accountability. So I will cite a few of the things that we are currently doing when it comes to the first one. We have instituted a practical leadership driven command and control culture at all levels of the service, such that personnel at all levels of the service are clear in their minds what needs to be done and see to it that appropriate steps are taken to get it done. So that we don't need to openly wait for anybody to give you direction. You are a leader at any level that you find yourself. Then the second thing done along that chain is to ensure that each one of us at all the chain is appropriately empowered such that as long as you do what is right and you do it professionally, you will have, you will have your back and to the level that now there's a culture that everybody is arrestable, you've been pretty bad. So what it is is that just do what is right in the space of your brand and you have the full backing of the whole police administration and nobody can do it. And on that score, if we are to give you a list of people who have been arrested, then the right center to shock you. Now you arrest people, they say, please, no noise about it. Take me to court. Everything there are absolutely. But at first, when we started, we arrested one person, and people say political. We arrested the second person, they say he, he under political is Now they are welcome to see and know that we didn't come just for one or two things, we came to maintain that consistency. The other thing we have done in that context, the same command and control, is to create an environment where there is recognition, there is reward and punishment in a transparent way. So that when you know that you are doing what is right, your normal promotion will come, but there will be additional promotion for you because we want it to serve as well a motivation for others to know that beyond your normal things, if you do extraordinary things, you will benefit or get extraordinary benefit. In the same way, the punishment is there. On the same notes, on the same command and control, we have also done it in such a way that there is a coordinated, consultative approach where we make sure that any time any policy intervention is being implemented. All the command levels to the lowest at the station, input are cutting from them, so that we have a portfolio of ideas that are put together in order to turn the corner of the organization, and also to let everybody who is responsible to ensuring its implementation feel a part owner of it, so that it is not left behind. And the final thing I'll say under that, it's also the issue of leadership by example at the very top in a united, in a teamwork faction that is also cascading towards all levels across the country. So that is the first one in terms of leadership driven command and control. The next one is to do with personal development and welfare. And here, a few things I will say. The first one in terms of the develop, personal development, recent recruitment that we should be taking. Did you see how we handle it? Humanely, you come, the time that you're supposed to show up, you come and you are dealt with in an environment that makes you feel comfortable. Then the whole process is better with betting in a manner for us to get the best. Because if we start getting that aspect right, then we will have less work in trying to work, get to the level of professionalism that we are looking at. The second thing that we've done in that environment is the issue of ensuring that all the trainings at all the level, recruit level, senior officers level, in-service training, we've changed everything to 75 to 80% practical, 20% theoretical. 
And for the first time in the history of this country, and probably in Africa and beyond, you have police officers who have passed out from training. They know how to write, they know how to drive, they know how to swim. <laughs> so now you don't see a police officer in big time, you are a swimmer, you go across. By the time you are already in the river, we are ahead of you. And if you have to do handboffing in the river to we have expertise to do that. And if you have 5,000 of us with that expertise, imagine it multiplied by it. The other point we have done is also to expose everybody to have the opportunity to go for UN mission and international assignment so that you get international exposure and have it to come influence the job that you do. Now, in the area of welfare, if I'm to list, let me quickly list a few of the interventions we've done there. The first one is that we have established regional welfare directories across the whole country for all the police regions, 18 of them. There are regional welfare directories out there supporting. And we have also instituted a mechanism to ensure that all indisposed police officers are visited. I started doing it myself across the country. Regional commanders are doing it, district commanders are doing it, regional commanders are doing it. We have institutionalized such that they will feel that if you do something and you are incapacitated, we will always be there for you and you will be abandoned. We have been identified. We have also established what we call Police Emergency Medical Intervention Fund. We received money of one million dollars, and it was planned by the President the President. And with that, anybody who get injured in line of duty within 24 hours, maximum 48 hours, every help that you need, wherever it takes in this way, will be provided without. And currently, we have had three of our officers who have benefited from it, and the money is invested in a manner that it will keep us growing and we'll make sure that as long as you work for us and you have an issue, we will not wait for you to wait for years before we are supported. Closely related to that is also the establishment of virtual police medical center, where wherever you are across the country, as long as you're a police officer, you can assess medical care at the police hospital just by the touch of the badge. <laughs> and probably this will be the first in the public sector, because I know other private sectors are also doing that. In addition to that, we have also instituted a policy of retirement planning in such a way that we help them to transit from working into retirement seamless. And we do that with a, a pulse and a program going around the country, preparing the minds of those who are retiring. And also we add to it that anytime you are retiring, one to two years towards your retirement, you have the opportunity to tell us where you want to settle. So we send you close to the place you want to settle so that you start acclimatizing to the exit. In addition to that, we have also decentralized pension processes. And how was it done in the past? In the past, you can come from my very good friend's hometown from BC to come to Accra to process your pension. And the story that times we do here is that you will succeed in coming to Accra when you get to Seto. Then you are in Accra all right, but Seto, you will hear people saying Accra, Accra, Accra. And you are not sure whether you have landed at the wrong place. But fortunately, with this decentralization, where we go to the people at the regional level, and very soon we are sending it down to where you actually work. So that we not even travel from, say, a village to the regional capital, but we will come to you and have your pension process to make sure that you need not to travel in order to get on to retirement. It becomes so inconvenient. Then the last one, about all things, is the issue of the way we treat people who die in line of this. We have an operationalized environment to the level that what we do is to ensure that when you die on line in line of this, with all the purchases that we need, we also open the opportunity for a child of yours or a brother of yours who qualifies to 
to be recruited to take your place whenever there's a recruitment process on board. So that that child continues the work you couldn't finish because of your untimely death, which was also in line of our duty. And it more or less like a way of pacifying the family for their loss. We know we cannot bring any more back. Let me end it there, probably focus on the other thing which will be of interest to you. But you will see that with the first one, leadership driven command and control, with the things we are doing with professional development, I mean personal development, you see that automatically it in to the benefit of professional standards and accountability. But beyond that, we are doing certain things specific. The first one, we are working closely to ensure that each and every one of us is conscientized, sensitized in the way that they become very careful the way we deal with the public. And that has led to all of us having our name tags moving, not just like a name tag on the plate. Now you can you cannot remove it from the uniform. And we are finished with the sensitization and very soon every police officer that you see will mention his name, his station that he's coming from, and we do all this thing before interacting with you. And we have a hotline. We have seen that it's not working the way we want. We are now making it a smart hotline and extend it to the 7,000, whereby if you don't get it from that angle, you can easily call for us to verify for you and make sure that we do what is right. In the same area of professional standard, we have also worked on the policy of ensuring that we have regional professional standard bureaus established to bring that closer to the public so that you don't need to all the time come to Accra or write a petition. You can walk in any of the offices that is established in the region. But the important thing about that one is also the fact that we have tried to make sure that the cases that come to us, those cases are investigated and the families are supported in some cases, supporting the medical care and the medical doctors, in some cases, providing social support and social support, support and in some cases to making sure that the right thing is done and the people are punished. But at times, when this thing is happened and we are doing it, we understand the apprehension of the public. The way that instantly something is done and the punishment is better. We can't do that. There is rule of law. And it has to go through a process. And if we fail working around the process, then what is going to happen is that the person, after every punishment that you might have probably given him, the person, the punishment in any court of competent jurisdiction will be passed, and the person will come back. So we follow due processes. So it's not that when it happens and the person is interdicted and the processes are followed, we end there. We don't. We make sure that the right thing is. So let me sum up in terms of all the things that we are doing internally to strengthen ourselves so as to be able to then go out there and police. Now let me go external. In the external environment, these are the four things that we are working on. The first one is community engaging policing. The second one is scientific intelligence led policing operations. The third one is transportation safety and management. And proactive transportation safety and management. And the fourth one is deepening interagency collaboration. Let me take a few slides on the issue of the, the community engaging policy. The community engaging policy, we keep deepening the number of police officers we put out there. Now we have added the motorbikes speed to it. And very soon we are deploying almost about 2,000 motorbikes across the country to take care of all highways and all that. We have also looked at the, all the issue of adding the dogs, adding the horses to make sure that we come closer and closer to you for you to feel secure. And beyond this, we are also doing what we call proactive engagement. And one of such proactive engagement is our being here today where we are engaging you, not because something has happened, but we are engaging you for us to be on the same page 
for us to collaborate and therefore for us to be able to know what is happening in your community and for us to provide the policy that is specific and targeted to the needs of your community. And in addition to that, we are also working on what we call reactive engagement. The reactive engagement is where something has happened. And you see that the district commander will show up there, the divisional commander will come, the regional commander will come, and in some cases, either the IDP himself will come, depending on the magnitude of the issue, or the IDP will take the phone call and call. And here we want to put on record that in all major cases, the victims and the people involved, in 90% of the cases, I personally call all of them and engage them and put them at heart in terms of the way we are and it's something that is institutionalized in a way that these two commanders are doing it, divisional commanders say everybody is doing it. And that is in such a way that even the engagement has been done in such a way that the regional commander, once in every month, you should be able to go around all your region. Divisional commander, once in every two weeks, you should be able to go every corner of your division. District commander, once every week, you should be able to go every corner of your district. So that the people who see us more, and if they have issues, we are there also to address them. We have also looked at the issue of engaging in terms of our media relations and in terms of sharing information. And now, if those of us who follow us in terms of our releases, you see that in respect of the time of the day, the time of the night, if incident happen, we will get information from us in terms of what is happening. And these are all forms of engagement to bring in you closer. Now let me tackle the issue of strategic, scientific, intelligent policy operations. Let me mention about three of the things that we've done in that angle. The first one is that we have established regional intelligent departments across all the police region. Because intelligence is everything. When you get intelligent right, the whole way it is reduced in terms of any other thing that you do. And some of the intelligent people, if I tell you the things that they do, it will not work. So whenever you take some of the taxis, you never know who is driving you. I keep telling you. And whenever you take an Okada, which is not legalized, but because you are penetrating, you never know who is on it. But the point we want to make is that, for your sake, we are everywhere watching and keeping the bad guys happy. The other thing, on the same stretch that we are doing, is the cultivation of informants across the country. And the pool of informants that we have, which we have commercialized, and what are call cash and carry, you will make sure that you bring the information, the information is authentic, you will personalize the information, you will get the results, come for your 1,000, up to 50,000, because that is how committed we are in protecting. And if I'm to tell you, because of intelligence, you don't talk. The people on the happy room, maybe you'll take it as a second job. <laughs> but these are all the things that we are doing behind the scenes to keep you safe. In addition to that, we are also doing a very comprehensive tactical hotspot for this. All the places that have become problematic for robbery, for conflict and all that, the type of deployment we put there, special forces we put there, and the results that we are getting from the to Dongok Room, to Yeji, to KJG, Kintampo, Bupe, Tamaru. Just name them. When was the last time you heard of any serious problem in this way? When you raise your head, or they will And that is what we are doing to keep you safe. Beyond that, we have also done so much in the area of establishing certain unique and specialized units. One of them is missing person unit. For the first time in the history, we have that. Because we want to be able to account for every missing person and trace them as long as it takes and get them united with their families. And if we are unable to do that on our watch, make sure that somebody to come with a framework in place to come and continue from where we the other thing we are doing in that same context, which we thank this university, especially the Department of Engineering, for, is since we established 
established a cold case unit for the first time in the history of the police service to tackle all cases that, especially murder cases that are born undetected over the years. You've had tremendous support from your investors and especially the Department of Engineering. And on this note, I would like to thank Professor Foucault, Professor Abuwa, Professor Pei Balad, and Professor Say Jr. and their team for the wonderful job they are doing in supporting the work that we are working on. And we have been working tirelessly on this. And we know who will succeed in finding the killers of some of these individuals. And when we are unable to succeed in finding the killers for all of them, the structures of the system we put in place for the preservation of the evidence and information, anybody who is committed to this cause will come and continue and will be able to get there to the level that everybody will know if you commit a crime in respect to how long it takes, we'll find you and bring you to justice. In the area of transportation, property transportation, management and safety and management. At times you always think that it's all about road safety, road road. There is also a you know we don't go that up there that often. There is also rain. And equally there is also uh, the water body. And what to tell you that especially starting with it, the water bodies we are started working and putting more of our marine people in place. And five thousand of our people now knowing how to swim. Imagine the magnitude of it. We are going to cover all our water bodies and ensure that when you are on it, you are fully secure. But on the issue of the road, you see that we've done a whole lot. When we came in, we saw that the most the 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 the, the motorbikes were on top in terms of fatalities when it comes to accident. And we put in place what we call police action against rider in discipline. Where now you will see a whole bunch of the motorbike riders being on their helmet, having their motorbike registered, ensure they get to red light, they try to stop nowadays. We haven't gotten there yet, but we are getting there. And even the level we have done and achieved with the latest figures from the National Road Safety Commission, we said that even fatalities in respect to motor accident have reduced by 12%. So if we can achieve that within the shortest possible time, by the time the year end figure, figures come, I think we will be all out there and a similar program has been, been put in place called the Police Invisible Eye Tie, where we are taking off all the entity guys from the road and we have put in place vehicles with cameras flying the roads who won't tell you where they are. And if we are also to tell you the amount of money that we are putting from indisciplined drivers on the roads across the country from this high program program, it will map you. Another thing we put in place is also in discipline in within our cities where people are using the middle of the road left right center. Nowadays, whoever you are, you try it. And the next hour, we take you to court. The beauty of it is that the law allows us to impound your car and wait for the termination of the court. And we get an order from the court to remove the stop lights the salary and everything before the guy is released to you. So at times, now the courts, because of the workload, they are taking the cases on the average of about six. So if you are lucky, maybe for two weeks, you have your car with us. <laughs> so in the quest to save 15 minutes, you have ended up having your car in front of both big men, small men, everybody is a victim. Everybody, everybody who has actually abused the law in that respect is arrested. And if we are to be realist, and I mean if we are to be realist, and I really mean if we are to be realist, you will say that we are almost there. You want some place? Tomorrow. On the other point is to go with the issue of deepening intelligence. But one last thing before I move on the deepening intelligence cooperation. Something that is so dear to our hearts that which we have not been able to convince all the transport union to fully bring it on board. It's called 
passenger lane and officer problem. We think that when you take a bus or any commercial vehicle, because you pay for it, the moment that the car is taking you from where you took it to your destination, you are the co-owner of the vehicle. So the driver cannot drive anyhow. Your life is in their hands, you pay for it. And therefore, until it takes you to your destination, together with the owner, you own the vehicle. So if that is the case, then somebody among you, the passengers, should be able to be appointed as a liaison officer between yourself and the driver and the union or the station that you pay the time rather than where you are going. So that if the driver is not driving where carelessly, considerately, then you should be in the position to question the driver. So we will not accept this. And I speak on behalf of the passengers. We launched this, a VVIP took it on board, and we are still refining to see how we can make it across all of them. So that at the end of the day, you get to the station, all what we are looking for is that one of you will be appointed as well, passengers, as an officer. And when the driver is not respecting your intervention, you should be able to call the station that you know them, have the car somewhere for the station people to get you another car from the nearest union station to take you to your destination. And when we do that, the drivers will start behaving and will not be overtaking when you're supposed to overtake. And unfortunately, at time when they do that, and you get a very committed person who wants to live to the fullness of his God giving destiny, questioning the driver. The same passengers who say, also proud and many so let's work on that, and I think it will be fantastic, and it will reduce this candidate on our roads to an appreciable level. Now let me conclude on this issue by looking at deep intelligence cooperation, which of course you know we've been doing across in terms of intelligence sharing with other security agencies and operations, especially this kind of terrorism, that we do it across to make sure that we continue to keep you safe and keep the country secure and peaceful. Now, one other thing which had across both internal and external is how we apply ICT in the work that we do. And there, what we are seeing is that we have internally we've done a little more, but there's so much to be done. But externally, I don't think we've done well at all. Because we are looking forward to a period where we'll have virtual police station, where you may not show up at the police station, you just make your complaint virtually, and then we'll send you all the information. Then we can even eventually also invite the suspect to build his case across. And when we evaluate it, I think it's something that we can eventually do it. And it is resolved and it's a win-win for everybody. That you show up at the police station, how it's unattended to and all that. So we have a lot of work to do. But internally, with the press of the party, we have to be concerned messages to every police officer across the country instantly. And we are also working where now we have virtually a sufficient level of paperless environment across the country, from headquarters to the regional level, we send documents electronically that we need not to find people to come pick it up and do that. So we are doing a whole bunch in that area and we will keep improving. Now, and now, the question is, why we are doing all this in order to keep it safe? We are not there yet. There is so much we want to do and we keep working at it. But at least the little you heard today to indicate to you that we are overly committed. We are overly committed in living our mandate. But we know one thing, we cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. And we need to help us. And why do we want to help us? Because if we work together, the bad guys suffer. But if we fight, the bad guys are strong. And with the nature of criminality and the boldness of the people in the way they deal with us, if we don't work together, it will not be good for all of us. The more so, when in a gang battle, whoever presses the trigger first gets the ghost. So at times we hear when we are doing these things of fighting these bad guys. And because they are not using toy guns, and because whoever presses the trigger first gets the ghost, 
the person that I always had. Do you want them to kill us? For them to protect you? Or when they are trying to take our life, for us to be smarter so that we continue to protect you? And I want to show you a footage. I said, well, probably having a bit of a break. Relax and just watch it. It's not a movie. But viewers' discretion is advised. This is a robbery scene. That I would like to watch is so funny. Very good one. This is not a good one. This has been close to the church of ones. And somebody in there, the only thing that saved the person's life is that he's the only person who can help them to get access to the money. Because after all the fire, they couldn't go to the next door. So they taxed the person to virtually move the money from where it is and give it to them if she wants it. He, he wants to save his life. So if we are happen to be at the scene and with the type of AP consultants that they are using, we are also using the same work. And then we'll beg them that our police don't go them. Come, let's go to the police station. But they are nice people. also shows lack of security consciousness on the part of the owners of it. But I do bring me to and add to his or her soul. He has saved his life. Now he's checking to see what happens. Yeah, I'm running away. 
And we don't have a system in this country where you can easily use to identify people. So you need to get these people arrested one or the other using some way beyond imagination and understanding. And thereafter, use the same people to help you to identify the addict. And at times when you are identifying them on the stretch of the operation, and you have say about six bulletproofers, and you are ten people going, people at times expect us to give them bulletproofers to the criminals who are going to help us to show the place so that we go without the bulletproof. So that when we were and go with them and conduct the operations and at times in the midst of a shade of fire, that person passes on, passes on. Then the person comes and somebody is in your custody. How can we die? Because we don't understand the dynamics and we have not taken our time to ask the serious questions. If we have all the databases to identify people, you mention his name, his hometown, and just go and find out. You, the person, have arrested, just be at me. But it will take only you in our current environment to help me identify the people we need. And on this operation, some of our people have to behave like madmen in communities. Some of them have to do sunshine. Some of them have to set up a small table to do momo transfer in order to arrest the first one. And then move on to get so far four of them. We are still looking for three of them. And we are showing it today because we know we are going to get it. So we want to assure you this. We don't take our job for granted. So when it should come out, listen to our side before you conclude. Other than that, we get demotivated every day. And if you keep on demotivating us and we keep becoming weaker, the bad guys keep becoming emboldened. That's why they time they can walk into a community by a crowd Kumasi highway and commit this with impunity and kill two people just because of the best call mine. So you see why you need to help us. Go by the individual level and at the university on itself. So how do you do that? We think that there are three levels of that help. The first one is what is it that you have to do for yourself. The second one is what is it that you have to do for others. And the third one is what is it that you have to do directly for us. But this is the magic. Anything that you do for yourself directly affects the others indirectly and beneficially. And it's also less in our work and support us. In the same way, whatever you do for somebody directly affects you indirectly and also affects the police directly. And finally, whatever you do for the police directly affects you indirectly and somebody also indirectly. So in that triangular setup, we are all winners if we choose to be helping ourselves. So I'll say only a few things under this and then I'll conclude. The first bit of the help for yourself is that we should be able to have a spirit mindset. We don't have it. We have totally outsourced our security to somebody else and minding our own business. That's why in all economic textbooks before until recently, security was never an issue. All the factors of production, factors of economic development, you never saw security until recently people are trying to do research and trying to look at the analysis between in the same way, because of our lack of security mindedness, we will build communities and when we finish with all the land, then we claim we need police. And when we come around, we are not finding land. They say, let's find some container and put the police in. When did we become a town? 
lack of security behind them. When you get that consciousness and you apply it, you keep going in it and you become a master of it. And then you can then handle every situation around you. And that lack of consciousness, except those who have been coming to this room regularly. I don't know how many of you know how many steps they have there. How many of the steps? Some of you might have been here for years. You have no idea how many steps you have to take to get to the top. You don't even know how many exits in case something happened where you came up, you came through. Where else you can go? How many of them are available? And which of the windows are capable of giving you an exit route? We just keep. That's what that's pretty much. So we are in it. We are in it and we are so exposed that when we are in the room and we sit down and walk into a room, then you see somebody sitting with a back facing the exit. How will you see what is coming? So as for you, you, you are just a gift to whoever on your time. You walk on the street and you know that when you are going to walk alone, there will be a problem. Yet you are on your phone chatting. And the next hour when your phone is taking, then you are crying. So all this is what is lost on us. And the final thing about what you can do for yourself is the fact that don't be the source of the problem. Don't be the team. Don't be the aggressor. And don't cause the conflict. In the same way, what is it that you can do for others? The first one, help them to develop their security mindedness and apply it. We have mothers, we have fathers, we have brothers, we have sisters, we have cousins, we have aunties, we have uncles. With the knowledge you have, if all of them are pushed to be aware of their security and reminded of their environment and not to expose themselves to threats, then we'll build a critical mass of security mindedness university community will be a critical mass of security minded in the Ghanaian community and therefore will be alert and then reduce the possibility of attack at the bad ones and also strengthen policing so that the resources we could use probably to handle some of the things will then use them concentrating on others. And the other thing you can do for others is also supporting them that they will not become the reference point of the problems. Now let me finally move on into the issue of what you can do for the police, and then I'll say a few words in conclusion. The first one, from the personal level, please criticize us. Criticize us, criticize us, criticize us. Because it is through that criticism that we learn the relevant lessons and become better. But once again, please. Let your criticism be constructive. <laughs> Don't just criticize as a messenger who have heard something and run away with it. And then they ask him, now, nah, Uncle, ah, maybe I don't see a man saying, come in and you see it, it's a police report, now you say, now we can. Let it be constructive. So that we can be encouraged to learn the relevant lessons and we keep improving and serving better. <laughs> Two. Two, try and be an informant, either on pro bono or on commercial basis, and we're ready to work with you in order to keep you safe. Three, when you become a complainant or a witness in a matter, support us to carry the case to its logical conclusion so that it will deter the criminals from acting. But I report the case today. Moral, you say you are tired. Police cannot proceed with the case without your consent, without your support. And when that comes, the criminal himself told that you don't even have time. So that every time I know, and no matter if you go to court, the court will be calling, calling, and the case will strike out. That is not helpful. That is not just helpful. The other point is that encourage others who have knowledge about things to contact us and work with us, and it will help all of us. Now let me say three things about what the university as a community can do in support of us. 
beyond the processes in which, of course, we know yours have always been constructive and it helps us improve. That's why we welcome the partnership that we are going to develop going forward. And I think it will be phenomenal. But we want to see whether you can consider introducing a mandatory course on security awareness. So that, I don't know how it's going to be done, so that people will take it and create that awareness and then they come every day thinking about security. The second one, we want, and we have started with uh, the Faculty of Social Sciences, where we want to see the collaborative partnership on research that will help us to develop homegrown strategic policing solutions that will go out there to implement, to improve policing in the country for the good of all of us. And the other one is where you work with us, like Professor Foucault and his team are working with us in the area of solving crimes where you have the competences in helping us to unravel. Right and when we do this, I can assure you, criminals themselves will change their behavior without important fronting. So to conclude, to conclude, let me say a few words. And that will also be an advice to all of us, and more importantly, to my fellow students. In fact, we are here now. It's just because we are waiting to die later in the day. Or probably tomorrow. And if tomorrow comes and we still alive, it's just that our tomorrow has not come. And it will definitely come and nobody can stop it. That is the mindset we need to walk around. And in my case, every Friday and Saturday, I use it as a young thing for measuring my level of humanity, considering the number of people who will be taken from the mob and the number of people who will be swallowed by the earth without any return. So when that happens, this is the next thing you see. You will be gone. And definitely you will be forgotten. But the interesting thing is that how soon you are forgotten is driven by whether you were selfish or selfless. How soon to be forgotten is driven by whether you are selfish or selfless. Not just your rich and unhappy. If you become selfless, the day you are buried will be the day that you will be forgotten. But if you are selfless, selfish, the day you are buried, the day you are forgotten. But selfless people. You will remember for a while, and then occasionally you will be forgotten. And then occasionally, when you want good mannered people, in things like people, you will remember. And that is the key to prosperity. So, young guys, my advice to you is that a lot of people came before you to this university, they are born and forgotten. All the confusion they came to create at the university. They are so have been forgotten. So if you are here and you think that you don't want to work and accomplish your God giving destiny, and you rather want to follow grouping and do things to undermine the sanctity of the investing community, remember, you'll be forgotten by the authorities. But whatever you did will follow you wherever you go. And if the people who used to be doing the bad things and creating the confusion and showing the disrespect to the teachers who give you the knowledge to go out and find a way, you are able to follow all of them. They will spare you how much they have regretted their action. So don't fall into that trap. And concentrate on your goals. And walk out there to add to the impact that the university is making after 70 years in this. Because the day that as human beings will recognize how pitiable we are, 
there are times you look at it and when you pass on, a typical case of a goat passing on and everybody is happy because there is goat meat to be shared. But the woman being passes on and if their partner is afraid to enter the room that they share together. And even when they see the blood, the dresses of the partner, he or she runs away. And when you are a regular visitor to the mall, and you have had the opportunity of experiencing postmodern on multiple times, I can come not probably many, maybe about 60 or 70, and I'm still counting. But I know the doctors, the pathologists, that's what I I guess I ask them, so we all have this. So if you put all these things together, you see that the only thing you have to do is to impact the life of others, is to be disciplined, and is to be humble and respectful. People who stand in front of you to teach you and give you money, you need respect. You respect for probably one or two issues that you may have. And you think that you'll get away with it. It doesn't work that way. It is only Let us stop it. Other than that, we'll have issues in the future. And then, we'll not be happy with ourselves. Finally, as I conclude, I want to say, as it is, your expectations will continue to be our mandate. And we hope our expectations will continue to be your responsibility. So that together, we can keep this country safe and secure as a tribute to our forebearers and also as an inheritance to our children. I thank you very much. General of the Ghana Police Service, Dr. George Ekufu Dampare. A round of applause again. <laughs> so we've heard a lot. We've learned a lot. I got something that Mozart and myself will develop a memo on very soon. That's a situation where you pass out in the line of duty. The family will have to consider so. I don't know who would. Mozart, a good memo, right? <laughs> yeah, so we'll send it to VC. So I've been told that the IGP will take five questions, only five, related to his presentation. He will address them, and, and the vice chancellor makes a presentation. So wherever it is you are, just raise your hand from the university community. Raise your hand, the microphone will be brought to you. We'll take note of all the five questions and get him to address all of them one after the other. So, um, Dr. Abavari. Professor. Professor Abavari, uh, we'll take the first question from you, please. Thank you very much. The speaker, I'm really overwhelmed by the talk. Uh, the kind of mindset that I used to have. On the police, I think it has changed. <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Especially the video I saw so actually broke my heart. To that extent, I'm really, really touched. The problem. risk you and your men are going through, I saw it. Oh, Professor Baba is crying. But just a quick one. It's both concern and question. The concerns maybe I will speak for others. You spoke a bit about it, about uh, 
the wheel of justice being slow. And the wheel of justice being slow is understood, but sometimes in the course of waiting, it appears to us as if being overly delayed. And when that happens, people then begin to throw the salvos against the place for being overly slow. And so that's the general concern for members. Then, what is my main question is, when you look at the video, these guys are holding sophisticated weapons. And these weapons, I'm not sure whether it's really available to the general public to go and buy and maybe to license it. And if the general public cannot acquire those weapons from their shelf, the question is, how did they get those weapons? This AK-47. How did it get to them? Is it because they have been imported from the fringes of our borders? Or some people used to perceive that perhaps the police service rather landed according to the ministry, I mean the bad boys. The bad boys also within the police service might have led them to these same people. So I will be very grateful if you actually clarify this session. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll take another question. Okay, please give the microphone to our guardian. Uh, let me salute my ID. I describe myself as a troublesome boy. So I will ask you some troublesome questions. The first item has to do with your Green age, black age, golden age. And I'm not too really sure of what the green age is, but it appears someone changed the green age to black age. And you have to really call the person who changed the green age to black age your master, my master, our master. Right or wrong, I cannot be sure. And for how long can that master be the master who changed the green to black? The golden age part has to do with if we see gold as money, how much of the gold is in the pocket of the average police person? How much? of the gold enters the pocket of the policeman for him to feel energetic enough to police me and police us. The last part is why should you be in black and black, black and black in the tropical Ghanaian Let me see your hand up. Do we have the hand of any lady? We are not having ladies. Oh, okay, so we have a lady there. Yes. So please, I have two questions to ask. And my first question is, security cameras we know are available at some regions, but its offices are in Accra. But I stand to be corrected on that. So how can the security agencies respond quickly to criminal activities if they don't have the means to witness it in the case where there are no witnesses? And my second question is, how effective is the response of the police in fighting crimes, especially murder, as we actually view the video, where before the arrival of the police, most of the evidence is likely to be tempered by suspect or by tenders. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so two more. Mr. Pami Yabwa, and then we go to the screen. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Mine is a request for an audience with the IGP after the program. I just need some two minutes for us to have a discussion and observation of it. I wouldn't want to be here. Thank you very much. So we go to the stream and somebody is holding the microphone there. So please go. Good evening. Uh, please, my question is, uh, as of October 2017, uh, the Avon IGP, that is Dr. Mr. Uh, Asante Abid, came to KNUSC to unveil the forensic lab laboratory and medical science. So I'd like to ask that in your position as now the IGP, uh, is there any other authentic or measures that you put in place to be paid? And that was being Thank you. Right, so our last question. Oh, uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Malveta. My question is very simple. Looking <laughs> looking at the current population of KBS, the this stands at over 86,000, and the population of police at the Oforiko Municipal, can we say that the ratio of police to student is okay in your perspective? And if not, what are you doing or going to do in order to augment for this huge uh, ratio? Uh, thank you. Thank you. So thank you here and then you will address all the questions. Thank you. So the first question. The ones that I will not be able to remember the later, but I'll try my best. The first one is to do with the delays that probably general concern. And we agree that when the delay comes, the public becomes uncomfortable. But now we have introduced mechanisms where we engage the family and give them the liaison officers who constantly bring them about the case. Because we believe that the public have so many important things to follow up than for us to come every week and tell them 17 cases. That is where we are. But if we target the affected family directly, then the consensus will be dealt with. But we're also working on the system such that at the appropriate time, quarterly or half yearly or something, issues that came out to the public domain after the families have been engaged. Because it is also part of our professional standard setting environment that we will not come out, for instance, if somebody has issues with the police, and we are telling them with it and we have some information. We will make sure that we share them with the affected family space and then go public rather than doing the opposite. Say so that they will hear it only in the media. Actually, the same thing, whenever there is an issue like this, we make sure that at the end of the day, when the family is even informed, we ask them whether it's something that they want us to go public so that we manage their concern, considering the fact that we live in a very traditional society. On the issue of the weapon, the interesting thing is that all the points that you raised to be a factor, but the scale of it is what is the differentiation, that brings the differentiation. We live in an environment where Ghana is just an island in the midst of a turbulent region, and definitely you should expect with the borders for this some of these people coming in, and especially when they are coming in from all different countries. There are also instances where at times police people are attacked. Where you have an instance in Zualudu where two police people were attacked around 6 p.m. and killed. And they are welcome to take it. And within about seven months, we did a special operation at in Kenta, Kuntunasi. Is it Kuntunasi near the bike? And there was a gunfire. The robbers crossed their line. And we retrieved that weapon. So that weapon traveled from where? 
you are able to acquire history and find yourself in a century. And with three weapons, one of them survived. The story of how they did it were told. And we are still working on a whole bunch of things in connection with that, so we don't want to do that. Then the issue of maybe some decommissioning weapons and in the hands of people. It's not beyond what we can control. But the beauty of it is that wherever it is, however it is, that will deal with it. We'll deal with it decisively to make sure that it passes. So that we want to assure. The other issue is to do with my uncle. I can answer your question on the second one. The second says, No, no, that, I'm trying to identify the enemy, but I tell them the set of questions now I'm raised. The first one, Uncle. Papa. <laughs> your questions weren't. They are solid questions. Let me put it that way. The first one to do with the golden age, the grey age, and all that, and the wet mask. It's one in the book, so it's quote unquote. How do you continue with that? If it and is that's nice. why I'm saying that it's what is in the book. So I'm just literally presenting what is in the book, but my mindset is different on that one. And at least you've seen instances where I've stood up to certain things. I don't remind you. On the issue of the golden age and the money in the pocket of the police, how much of the gold in the pocket of the police. We want to assure you that. Policing is a calling. And if I have the opportunity to reincarnate, I'll join the police again. And again. And again. Because I feel that it's one of the best jobs you can do when you look at people and you don't sleep and you get up in the morning and you have been able to keep the whole country safe and still. so much satisfaction that no amount of money can buy. And like analogy I gave you, selfish people as well as how rich you are in forgot. I want to be selfless so that even in the process of being forgotten, when I'm forgotten, I will intermittently be remembered. And I think that alone can probably give opportunity to my children, my children, children, because of what I stood for and what together with my colleagues we did. The issue of the project, uh, the uniform, we have been struggling to change it. And we will get there, but I don't know how soon. But unfortunately, is that all the uniform we want to use have been taken by other security agencies. So the colors are almost done. So at times we do and recalibrate and we find now then we come back. So we are working on it. But very soon we get to a point where we are doing committee patrols, you see a police person in La Cause, cutting La Cause, blue black, maybe navy blue or something, a community, a uh, tropical nature. We will get there. At first, we wear this traditional look and all that. But now, IDP is in the red. It means that we want to look smart and as as young as you. So, these are the issues. Then, about four hours, I will see you as soon as we do that. But my sister's question to do with her father response time. Response time, response time, response time. We will keep improving, but what is important is that you see that as a country, the best way of ensuring effective response is having police presence spread across the country in a very coordinated way. Like you came here, you said we are talking about things we are doing. We are not talking about things we are about to do. But one thing you are soon going to do by somewhere middle of next month. Is a deployment of almost 2,000 motorbikes. I cross the country, and the whole country is network that our roads are going to be policed, the towns will see the motorbike. And response time, we are looking at the average of less than 10 minutes. 
e o mundo deve ter o mundo. Educam, e quando eu show the map is not here, the way we have designed the network and across the country, deploying a few platforms of almost about 130 in major cities across the country, where all the exit routes to the country, to that city, is being, towns and cities are being by police, and the towns themselves are also being police. Like we said, we don't want to talk that much. We want our actions to do the talking for that. So give us a little vision. And when we get there, you see what it is. And you ask another question. Which was the camera? No, the camera. You wrote it, but you don't have it. The camera. The camera system we have is not centralized. We have a session in Kumasi, there's one going on in Tamale, the main one is in Accra. And it's networking in such a way that our communication is also effective, that whoever is observing, whatever is observing it from. Kumasi people, Ashanti people will be concentrating on Ashanti people. Accra will concentrate across the whole country, depending on areas that are fresh to us in terms of crime analysis and the GI, GIS people will tell you, hospital analysis and all that. And then, Camera people are also concentrating on the northern sector. So anytime there is the need for us to observe something and follow up, it is not an issue. It's just a communication to the next station, what I should need to take. And with the deployment of the FPUs, the regional FPUs in platoons across the country, is going to be done in terms of response time and dealing with long distance. So I can assure you there is a lot being done in that regard. Then the question of the number of police, that is the question from Dr. Sam, uh, Dr. Sapo, my, my new brother. He said that he went to private college. Oh? I went to Kukuwai. For oh, Kukuwai? Yes. Ah, okay. I'm but not... I have a private college problem. I was with private college people because of my <laughs> That is just by the way. But the most important thing is this. We have long recognized that deficiency. And we think that by the spread of imagination, the university itself is a city on its own. So it's a city within a city and it has to be political. And like you said, we are not talking about things we are about to do, but there's a program in place to create university, police, patrol, and intelligence for all the universities. But we need to sort it out with you and the leadership of the university first. So that at any point in time, you see on my sort of mobility and uniform also mobility, all aim at keeping all of you safe. And that is the partnership we are embarking on. And to be frank with you, this is going to be a permanent marriage between the police and the university community across the country, starting with the university. The forensic like lab, lab, sorry, by a young man. I can assure you, we came to build on the achievements of our forebears, and nothing will stop us from doing that. Because this is it. When we succeed in doing that, then the resources spent on that will become beneficial to all of us. And I can assure you, in the shortest possible time, we are going to look into that matter and attend to it with the rapidity you said. I can assure you. Thank you very much. All right, so the moderator was to ask this question. Um, I realized on the digital and the satellite platform that you are about to establish the Ghana Police Television. And I believe it is one of your efforts to improve the outlook of the police. Now, beyond the cost and the production of content, I have a concern on the plan. Is it to exclusively handle issues of police at the detriment of the other media houses? Is it going to be the go-to channel on everything police, such that it will probably not be evident on the other uh, platforms that we know, that's my question. The interesting point is that 
the issue of having the TV station. And at times, people say that even the entities no national outlook have TV stations information for the purpose of engaging. The issue is to create a channel to engage the community to a level that we will win their hearts and minds and get them to partner with us to deliver the policy and keep this country safe and secure. That is the purpose for the establishment of that. And the beauty of it is that we will do it in tandem with all other media houses so that together we will come out as a group purposefully working together in partnership with each other and ensuring that we are able to engage. So it will be a cross cutting thing and we will share and engage and interact and we will be good to go. But the final bit on the issue of the cost is that all these are being funded by benefits. And it is so beautiful that where we got into, when we start coming out, you are test to you that we keep to compromise and not to compete. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, the IGE, Dr. George Kufudampari. I will invite our chairperson, the vice chancellor, um, supported by the approvals and then the team to do a presentation to the IGP. This is from us to you. And uh, we have Kwame Nkrumah standing there and giving us that freedom wave. This is the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And as you drove through, you went through the school, which is a symbol of the Ashanti Kingdom. And therefore, we present this to you on behalf of management staff and the, our students, and of course the entire university community. Um, we are very grateful for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please be seated. So I think you can do it better for the IGP. <laughs> You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that um, you would all agree with me that we have had a very insightful evening. Is that correct? Yes. And the presentation was clear, precise, concise. So you think I'm going to make an attempt to summarize? I wouldn't. Thank you. But it suffices to say that he is telling us that look, we are all in this together. We are all in this together. He said the responsibility first and foremost is to ourselves, to our communities, and then to who? To them, to be able to help us, to look after us, so that we can continue to feel very secure. You see, work on our security mindset. Sometimes when I receive some of the reports from, you know, that some of the challenges that students have had, security issues, and, and some of the stories, I, I, I can say, ah, my, my children, my students are intelligent and they, Go and bring all the laptops in 
your room because I'm a prophet. So that I will pray for you so that impending death ahead of you will be taken as, you know, scrapped. for Asoka Division, Mr. Mohini Uedi Osman. <laughs> Assistant Commissioner of Police at the Police Hospital, he is a pathologist. Please applaud Dr. Osu <laughs> I want to acknowledge the media, Mr. Pamir J. Graham, <laughs> for coming. We acknowledge all the staff and students who came, and finally I will acknowledge myself. <laughs> Let's take these two important announcements. Culture and Tourism, Year 2 students, you will meet your teaching assistant immediately after this lecture in front of Block B. And then there will be a photography session in an orderly manner right here on the stage after the session. Shall we please rise for the closing prayer to be said by the Reverend Father Dr. Antonina, the Catholic Chapel. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Dear Lord and Master, we are so much grateful to you for the gift of our lives. We thank you for our dear nation, Ghana. We thank you for the law enforcement agency. We thank you for the leader and the commander of the police service, our own IGP. We thank you for his words of encouragement to us and also his words of assurance that we are doing everything to make sure that we are within a safe environment. We thank you for the grace you've given him thus far that we could trust and trust them into your care. If you don't build the house, the work of the builders might be vain. Be with them, with their families. Grant them the sound mind and body that they need in the execution of their work. We thank you for our year university. We thank you for 70 years of existence of global impact and even our desire to do more for another nation and for the entire world. We thank you for the leadership and management. We thank you for the ideal college the faculty, the committee that planned and organized this wonderful moment for us in our lives. We thank you for the fact that we all are involved in our own security. Even as, even as we depart from here, and may we all enjoy your protection, your love and care in our lives. And may your blessings be upon us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you very much. 
you very much. I want to acknowledge the Ashanti Regional Police Commander. Again, he joined us later. Thank you very much for coming, sir. And uh, thank you all for coming. It's now time for the picture picking session. Management, IGP, the public lecture committee, and the committee in social science will put together. You take it first. Afterwards, an unknown will take their part, and I'll be announcing as we go. So, management, yes, we'll come on, please. Uh, and then take the picture.